Welcome to example three. We're looking to find out how high a baseball would go if you were to throw it upwards with a velocity of 20 meters per second. And we want to use a energy method to solve this. Now just as a quick little aside, you could solve this using kinematics. So let's just do a quick little review just so that you can check to see if the answers make sense and they match up with each other. You could solve this by using simply the final speed squared equals the initial speed squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement along the axes that it's moving, which we'll call y. So this is the acceleration along the y-axis, this is the initial vertical velocity, and the final vertical velocity. Now the final vertical velocity is 0 because it stops at the top, so we have 0. The initial vertical velocity is 20 meters per second squared plus 2 times the acceleration vertically is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times delta y. So on your calculator you're going to be putting 20 squared which is 400 and then dividing by 19.6. Okay and you should get about 20.4 meters. So that's how we solved it using kinematics. However we want to solve it using conservation of energy. The total energy of the system, which is the baseball, is conserved. It stays constant. So the way we indicate that we're applying conservation of energy is we use EI, which stands for the total energy of the system initially, equals EF, which means the total energy of the system finally. And this energy remains constant, so they're equal to each other. Now the initial energy and the final energy are composed of two types of energy. We have kinetic energy plus potential energy initially, and we have the same thing finally. So we typically write out these two expressions. Some of them may be zero. So you can rewrite the kinetic energy with the formula that you know. It's one half mv initial squared, and the potential energy you could write as mgh initial. And the final kinetic energy is going to be a very similar expression. It's, got, it's going to be one half mv final squared plus mgh final. Now, before we start substituting here, we want to choose some convenient locations uh, for our height. So if you recall in the earlier page, if you look up here, you see there's a little bit mentioned here. It says it's ideal to choose a spot where you would call potential energy to be zero. We often choose some convenient position and assign it to have zero potential energy. Essentially, that height is zero. So that everything that is above it would be, you could determine the potential energy relative to that position. We usually we like to pick a convenient place like a floor or a table. So in this particular example, I would assume here that the height initially here is zero. So this is our zero reference level. This is like where our reference frame starts. That means that this term is going to go to zero because our height is zero. We also know when the ball rises to the top, the final velocity is zero. So that means it doesn't have any kinetic energy. So over here on the right hand side, the final velocity is zero, so this kinetic energy goes to zero as well. So what we have is the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy. And you'll notice that since we have an m on both sides of this equation, we can cancel out the mass, so the mass is irrelevant. And so we're solving for the height, and the height, if you re do the, rewrite this expression, you will have the initial speed squared divided by 2 times g, which is, guess what? Going to give you the same answer that we got when we did with kinematics. That's 20 squared divided by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared, and the final height that the ball rises to is 20.4 meters. So now you're going to find that some of the problems we did earlier, you have now a fast, neat way to get answers that might have taken you a longer way of doing it, particularly when things move in two dimensions like projectile motion or an inclined plane. And that's it for this example.